because of copyright issues, we were forced to mute the music behind this video. We are going to cut this short because it's kind of silly for you to watch a video with no music. We will leave a link below. Just wanted to let you know that the drummer you see in the clip here is Burley Drummond, our special guest from Ambrosia. And welcome to Musings, Rants, and Guitars. And we weren't expecting to come on live today, but we have a very special guest, Burley Drummond from Ambrosia and Tin Drum. Welcome, Burley. Hey, guys. Welcome, it is brother. so nice to see you. And uh, I have to say, <laughs> so impressed that I don't know how many years was between those two clips, but there's a lot of them. And you guys don't tune down. And your timing right. is impeccable because it's exactly the same timing. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, uh, yeah, really impressive. It really impressive. Great. Thank you for coming on. It was, and Joey and I had watched that earlier just before we get to you. It's just the two of us were just like, oh my God, how do, I mean, the people you think are great singers, you know, tune down after a while. And you guys absolutely nailed it. So, well, yeah. yeah I, yeah, I mean, Ambrosia, it, it was, if you wanted to sing in Ambrosia, you had to get in a long line because, you know, you know, you, know, yeah, you had Dave Pack and you had Joe Puerta, who were both Absolutely. fantastic singers. So um, I had to pay money to sing. You know, it's just, well, yeah. Very good. In fact, you know, that's that the first clip, of course, was the record, and that's mm -hmm. Dave. And then the second one you played, that's Joe singing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. that's interesting. Yeah, you, you know, and, and you because Joe was played bass on the first clip, right? So, right, um, yeah. and it's uh, to to see you know to see you guys together still. I mean, you guys you guys have been playing as as a uh, you know as a rhythm section for a long time. Right? Yeah, I know. Get get a lot of comments on, on Joe and I playing together. You know, I, a lot of people you know are you know impressed with it. And we don't think about it. You know, in fact, we kind of pick each other apart a little bit, you know, in a good way. Yeah. But, you know, people are always, you know, saying great things about Joe and I, the way we play together. But uh, I don't know, I guess we just kind of take it for granted, you know. Yeah, we, we do. We, I mean, we know each other so well, you know, especially musically. I mean, you Absolutely. know. Absolutely. I think that that drummer bass player thing, you know, it, it's tighter than than anything else because you guys are, you know, you you, you form that whole rhythm. So if the whole backbone for the band is right there, um, whereas you know, guitar players, are, you know, they they got that melody thing, and you know, they got that narcissistic attitude, right, Tommy? Well, guitar <laughs> players are really weird, aren't they? Yeah, we play it, baby. You know, because it's all about us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. <clears throat> Did you ever hear the 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 quote Keith Richards? Said about you know because he was on some show I guess and they asked him you know or the interviewer like you know so why are rock and roll guitar players you know just a little different than other people and uh, Keith Richards said you know if you spent most of your life in a room learning the history of rock and roll by yourself he goes you'd probably end up a little strange too <laughs> so true. yeah so true. <clears throat> too many hours by yourself absolutely so. Uh, you, you, we, you started to talk real briefly before we got started on this. Uh, right. We were talking that, that Ambrosia, was, you guys were really a, a progressive band, a prog band, when you guys started out. Well, you know, oh, yeah, okay, so I should you know, um, fill that in a bit, because we really were an everything band. I mean, uh, right. I mean we, we, when we did our first album, we had to, uh, we, we had to demo all our songs. So for, so for the, the head of the label, Russ Regan, to come in, and you know, kind of pick what he liked. So we demoed up like basically 60 songs, and it was everything from you know the band even before I joined it was more country, and um, and then uh, so it was kind of, it was pop, it was country, and then we had a you know a few prog things like nice nice and not yeah. you know, holding on was in there, and then we had this strange one called Mama Frog, you know. Uh, out of the twisted mind of Joe Puerta. So uh, we we demoed all these songs and Russ Regan came in. Uh, Rock and Russ Roll, Regan Myers also discovered Elton John, John probably end up a little Diamond, and um, Barry White. So 
he came and he heard all our songs and he goes, it's all good. He goes, it's all great. And you guys could go in any direction. He goes, but these songs, he goes, you know, he isolated nice, nice and mama frog and holding on. He goes, he goes, I don't have anything like that. All our songs. He goes, and he goes, it's, all it's all good. He goes, it's all great. You know, and I got, all, I have all this stuff, but I don't have anything that's cutting edge, you know, or taking it, you know, taking chances. And he goes, if you guys can do that, you know, we, that, that's what I want. And, you know, and that was, we had just seen um, King Crimson for the first time. Yeah. And we were, we, we were yeah. already, you know, we were already ELP fans. And, uh, and yes, of course, in Genesis. So we said, yes, let's, that's what we want to do. And so the first two records, that was our main influence. I mean, it wasn't our only influence, but it was, a, you know, it was a, a strong influence, and we went that direction. But, you know, then over the course of time, uh, during, during the recording of those first two records, we had to make a living. We had to, uh, you know, it's like we didn't have the luxury of just um, recording all day. So at night, we had to walk down the street and play a female gay bar uh, mm -hmm. because it was convenient. And, you know, and we played like three, four sets a night playing R&B, dance music, you know, real R&B. Right. So, so that slowly, you know, started creeping into our, um, our musical mentality because, you, you know, you play, you play something enough, it kind of becomes a part of your, your thing, you know. And so we started writing tunes like Living, uh, Living on My Own, biggest part of me, how much I feel, you're, you know, a little more R&B-ish. So that's where those songs really kind of started. Uh, wow. Uh, you know, in a female gay bar. <laughs> yeah, in the club, right? <laughs> Great story. <laughs> we uh, all awesome. owe it all to that female gay bar. Yeah. The, the famous Hialeah House in North Hollywood, yeah. Wow, wow. So where did you grow up? And like, like you know, who were your influences as you were, as you were growing up? Well, that's assuming I grew up. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, we won't assume anything at this point. Yet, cause we're still, you know, we're, we're sitting here being guitar players in the basement. So, <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, I'm, a, I'm an army brat. So, uh, so my father is a full colonel in the army. And so, you know, I grew up on every military base on the East Coast, basically outside, one outside Chicago, down in Alabama. Um, and then finally went to Turkey, Ankara, Turkey. Uh, for about four years, and that that was a huge influence on me because uh, that's where I kind of first developed my ethnic, uh, you know, interest. You know, uh, so uh, so from that I started hearing you know, a lot of Turkish music and uh, Middle Eastern music, and then I got into uh, Indian music and African music and studied all that stuff, and. Yeah. Uh, so that, that was huge. I got to study with Ala Raka, Ravi Shankar's taba player, and uh, a Kwasi Badu master drummer from Ghana. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's like, uh, I got a lot of input, you know. And, uh, and, of, and then studying with the famous Freddie Gruber, who's the no, most notorious drum teacher of all times. So, um, yeah, I've had some input. Yeah, you had a lot of influences there. Absolutely, yeah. it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, no, it's it's interesting how you mentioned like the uh, world beat kind of music because in your drumming, I always felt like I heard not like your standard drumming. It was more, <clears throat> I kind of want to say African or just more worldly. Is that influenced by you growing up and being all these places exposing to new music? Well, probably. I mean, but you know, I yes, I, I definitely think um, you're you're the you're, you're the sum of all your parts. You know, so uh, you know, obviously, the having an, an intense interest in all these other forms of music kind of reflected in the way I played. But but all it did really was just open the uh, the toolbox to uh, you know, it's like you know the backbeat did not have to be on two and four. The bass, bass drum didn't have to be on one, you know, three. It's like, and that was the beauty of Ambrosia. The other members of Ambrosia were so open to anything, you know, if it, if it felt good, 
it was fine, you know. So we yeah. weren't trying. We weren't trying to uh, to to copy anybody. We were just trying to be ourselves, and right. I think that that's, that really was the key. Absolutely, you guys had such a different sound on. You know, you had so many hits, and you had a different sound on almost every one of those hits. I mean, the, there is something that's there that that's that glue that you know makes it familiar, so you can tell it's you guys. But you guys, you could hear a lot of influences going on there, and wow. uh, yeah, Thanks. very diverse. You know, yeah, uh, like there's yeah. a lot going on in all those songs, and even though you've had like something like uh, five uh, top forty hits. You know, people, you know, the yacht rock genre, I mean, you know, you know the band only for those songs, but there's definitely like prog influence going on. Because back, I'm assuming in that time, 74, 75, 76, you didn't set out to say we need a hit single. The music just came from just playing with each other, I'm assuming, right? Right. I mean, yeah. And uh, like, say, our first single, Holding On to Yesterday, that used to be a country song. You know, <laughs> I, oh, it had it, you know, it had a little yodel in it, you know, yeah. and and uh, and I, uh, so we, we tried recording it and it was okay, it was good. Um, but uh, the night before we went in to really to cut the record, I was listening to The Thrill Is Gone by BB King, okay. and I just it just kind of dawned on me maybe we should try this a little more bluesy instead of country. And that's what we did. We tried to, it was our version of A Thrill Is Gone. That's what we were doing. Right. That's how Holding On to Yesterday came out. And I guess people liked it. So, you know, it became yeah, our well, first. It, without a doubt, it's a great song. It's a beautiful yeah. song. It, you know? it probably could have worked as a country song, too. And you'd probably be. Yeah. A good song is a good song, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's a good song. It, it, you know, it's, yeah, you're right. That's a that's a good way to look at it. But, yeah. Um, yeah. But I'm glad it's didn't come out as a country song right no no no, no. <laughs> yeah yeah you guys would, really you, good you would you would be living in nashville now doing something else so it's amazing yeah i've had offers to go to go to nashville i've worked with uh producers that have come out here uh to produce artists that i played on their record and they said oh man you should come to nashville and you know it's like okay so i go to nashville what happens oh you know you know Take you a couple of years to break in. I don't want to spend a couple of years to break in. <laughs> you know. All right. Spend a of years. Anyway, yeah, I, I appreciate Nashville. I actually, <clears throat> I mean, some amazing players. I've gone there. Uh, you know, whenever I've played around there, you go. What's the what's the main street there on the in Nashville? You uh, with all the bands lined up. I just you know, it's like I saw a Is guitar player there. Music Row. There. Yeah, it's not Music yeah. Row. It's um, what's it? Oh, my son. Uh, my son's the new improved drummer. Oh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, he's got a band. Uh, and he's the, in Nashville. Yeah, he's he just was in Nashville yesterday, last week. He's uh, he's got a band called the Everly Brothers Experience, and uh, he's nice. just, they are killing. They are unbelievable. Nice. Yeah. So. Awesome. We'll look out for that. I call them the new improved model. Mm. Yeah, so, you know, our conversation about Nashville, the times, you know, we've been there on and off. And, and, and just, you know, that the guy who's, you know, pumping your gas is a better guitar player than you are. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I saw a guitar player there that uh, was combing his hair while he was soloing. So he was soloing with one hand, combing his hair. And, and, I, and it was like one of the best solos I ever heard. You know, it was like, <laughs> Jesus, you know. Yeah. It's, you, yeah. you need to be prepared to be humbled. <laughs> no, it was, it was great. Which it was is great. So, so good. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Burley, just getting back to some of your, I know we were talking about the songs that were hits, but getting a little bit deeper with songs like Nice, Nice, Very Nice, um, I want to know what the inspiration was for the song "A Cowboy Star" because that is a oh, wild song. Yeah, like it's very cinematic, almost like it's a part of a landscape in a movie scene or something, and brilliantly done. I was just wondering what was the yeah. mindset when you recorded that song. Well, so Joe Joe Puerta, who's probably one of my favorite lyricists, he, I mean, one of my three favorite lyricists, Joe Puerta, can write a lyric like nobody. 
And uh, that was um, a guy uh, that lived down in San Pedro, which that's where the band is originally from, San Pedro. And, and he was, Jerry O. Mahoney was his name. He was the son of Jock Mahoney, who was Tarzan. Right. Uh, okay. <laughs> so uh, Jerry O. Mahoney always uh, wanted to be a, a cowboy star. And so Joe wrote the song about him, uh, you know, but, you know, just seeing somebody that was the son of, you know, and getting to know the whole family, you know, the, you know, Tarzan, you know, it's, yeah. yeah. But Joe painted this whole story about, you know, as a tribute to his friend, you know, someday you'll be a cowboy star. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> it's a wild song. Yeah. Yeah, it is. And that's, I think that's, a, and that's the London Philharmonic playing on it, I think. Really? Is that, wow. Yeah. And the Swingle singers. Oh, no, that's Dance With Me, George. The swing, uh, on the same album, we do that song, Dance With Me, George. Mm -hmm. And that's, uh, that was the Swingle singer singing on that. Wow. Yeah. Well, speaking speaking of tributes, you uh, or the band played on uh, like a remake of the Beatles or a tribute to the Beatles' Magical Mystery Tour. Or yeah, it uh, actually, was a it was a, a war movie, World War. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's. I think it was probably one of the biggest flops of all time. <laughs> uh, well, it was it was a strange concept. The guy wanted. Uh, it was, and God bless Russ Regan. He's passed away now, but he had this concept where he wanted to do all this World War II footage, you know, to Beatle music. And, you know, there were a couple of great moments, like when you're seeing Adolf Hitler, you know, up in his, you know, mountain retreat, and they're in Fool on the Hills playing, you know. So a, a couple of things were, but so the movie kind of never, ha you know, it came out, but I think I was the only one in the band that even saw it, you know, in a little art theater down in Hollywood. But, you know, the album was ridiculous. I mean, you got Elton and, you know, Elton John, Rod Stewart, Leo Sayer, uh, you know, it's like, and they all had hits, you know, like Elton John, Lucy in the Sky, he had a hit with that. Rod Stewart had a hit with Get Back off of it. Yeah. You know, and, and Ambrosia had a hit with the Magical Mystery Tour. So, I mean, the music came, the, the album is unbelievable. If you can get your hands on the album, it's worth having. Definitely, wow, that's definitely. fantastic to be a part of, of that. So, and it's interesting too because Ambrosia's, uh, well, you know, we tend to overproduce. You know, uh, we tend to uh, pick apart everything. Uh, you know, we, we were we were pickier than Steely Dan in the day. Uh, in fact, we were so picky that uh, um, uh, the Beatles, uh, George Martin uh, and Jeff Emmerich, were thinking of producing us. And they came down to one session that we were doing, and they said, "Oh no!" He go, they go, "You guys are way too picky for us," you know. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's so, funny. yeah, but uh, but then, but we had a different producer that did, uh, you know, uh, Bud Harner, I think, was the producer, and uh, and he just came in, and uh, we we ran through the tomb. You know, thinking we were just, they were they were getting sounds, and we just ran through the tune. And he goes, "Thanks, that's it." <laughs> and we're going, "Whoa, no, 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 no!" We were. Oh, I'm sorry, that is it. You know, you're done. And he goes, "Who's going to sing it?" You know. <laughs> right. And so, uh, so that was that was it was fun to do it that way to do something that fast and, you know, sometimes you, sometimes you you know you play better when you don't think you're going you're actually recording. You know. Right. Absolutely. Uh, agreed. You never so, know when, when it's the magic. The magic takes its own, you know, it's yeah. its own thing. No, absolutely. Uh, uh, there's a, I, I read a, a great thing that Bill Murray uh, was, he said he used to have trouble performing and then he read something somewhere that the best way to be is to, you have to realize that you're never going to be better than you are when you're just being yourself. So he go. Yeah. So he he decided that he would just be himself. You know, come hell or high. You know, if it works, it works. If it done, it done. But he said, as soon as he started doing that, he started having success because he started just being himself, and whatever happened, happened. So. Wow. Yeah. You know, that's very true, right? 
Yeah. Very true. Take a deep breath and you know just dive in, right? Yeah. 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 So yeah, tell us about the uh, this. You do tin drum also, right? Yeah. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about that. Okay, so uh, when uh, Ambrosia took a break about uh, 1983, we stopped for about six years because the business was so bad. uh, With our, we had all these horrible contracts, and we. You know, we were doing other people's albums just to make a living and things like that. So <clears throat> we stopped. And during that period, I met my wife, Mary Harris. Right. And uh, and but then so we had a we had a, we had a son, and she started touring with uh, Jimmy Buffett, and I started uh, uh, playing with people like Jim Messina and stuff like that. And uh, so we were handing our son off to each other in airports. You know, like. I'd be going in, coming, you know, going out. She'd be coming in. Hi, great to see you. Here's our, you know, here's our son. Okay, bye. You know, so it was got really crazy. So we kind of just decided that the only way we're going to spend a lot of time together is to start working together. So we started Tin Drum, and we we did three records, and uh, you know, we won a lot of indie award stuff, and it was great. We had you know a minor hit, uh, which was interesting we had this song surrender and uh one of the uh, radio programmer one of the guys that that books you know he sets the the playlist for 600 stations yeah so you know he decides what 600 stations are going to play and he remembered me from an interview i did when he was just a local dj and i was really nice to his young daughter that was there so he he remembered me and he called me up out of the blue and he goes uh burley he goes, you have a hit record here. He goes, uh, now, if I know you have a million dollars available to promote this record, we can take it all the way. You know, I, and at the time, I had maybe $100. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, so I didn't do it. But come to, you know, he explained to me that even Paul McCartney has to spend a million dollars on a record to make it work. You know, it's like if all those hits that you see, they're not there uh, without substantial funding making yeah. them. Yeah, there's, there's, it, it, you know, hitting the lottery is one thing, you know, getting to that point, but then, you know, after that, it's work and it's marketing and it's a business. Absolutely, and, absolutely. And Ford I'm, sells cars because <laughs> they advertise. Yeah, sure, absolutely. And that, that's probably, I don't know what the, it's, I haven't dealt in that world in a long time, but uh, I, I bet it's still the same thing. I mean, um, I bet, you know. Who, who knows right now with the yeah. record, you know, industry right. or whatever it is right now as far as how things become hit. I mean, I'm sure there's the million dollars that promotes something to make it a hit, but other than that, it's, it's a... Yeah. It's crazy. It's, it's always, it has been a crazy business and it yeah. always will be. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Burley, you had a, um, getting back to producers oh, okay. before. Yeah. Um, what was, you had Alan Parsons actually work with you or was he in the band or help produce? And what was it like working with him? Well, it was great. I, mean, I you know, he, so he mixed uh, the first record and then he, produced and mixed the second record somewhere I never traveled but the first record <clears throat> funny story about Alan Parsons so I came in to you know a mix down one time when he was mixing and uh, you know a, 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 he, he was staring like straight at the speakers and it took me a second to realize that he was mixing but he was mixing so softly that you could heart I mean I had to strain to hear the music really yeah he was he was he was mixing so he could he, it was all it was like a whisper and he goes if i can hear everything like this he goes i think i'm on the right track you know i mean, of course he he played it at uh, other volumes too sure, sure. it was really it really blew my mind that he that's how he was and then we we were at the same time we were we had a friend gordon perry um who was the chief recording engineer for London Decca Classical. And he was involved with us too. And he led us to Alan. But he used to he used to want to hear it on the cheapest. He wanted to hear all the mixes on the cheapest 
ugliest speaker he could find. The car mix. Yeah, a car mix, but like a mono TV speaker, anything yeah. like that. He goes, if it sounds good on that, it's sounding good, you know. And right. uh, so we learned some big time lessons about audio. And Alan Parsons, the first record that um, Alan mixed, and the Al Ambrosia album, uh, Doug Sachs mastered it. But audio, uh, audio some audiophile societies have uh, have rated it the number one recorded piece of vinyl in history. You know, they say yeah. that's the best sounding yeah. piece of vinyl. You know, so thank you, Alan Parsons. I, you know. I'm gonna have to say, you know. From from personal experience with with vinyl, I've heard you know I've listened to you know I grew up with vinyl and yeah. I've heard the the CD mixes and the digital mixes and the enhanced mixes, and then gone back to the vinyl. Yeah, it, it's either me in my memory brain or it's actually really better. You know, I, 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 yeah. I understand. You know, I understand sine wave versus digital and everything, and I, I really think it is because, you know, for us myself you and if, no. you know we're used to live music we know what music really sounds like yeah. you know we we know in a room what it sounds like you know other people who have grown up with just buds in their ears and listening to stuff don't really understand or, or now they do because now they're going back to vinyl and listening to it but there's is a world of difference there well i think vinyl you know i had the had the well just recording to tape too yeah. You know, the whole process, you know, the tape rounded the, uh, you know, it wasn't spiky. Like, nope, rounded yeah, the curves. Yep. Digital is all spikes. Yep. But, you know, tape just rounded and smoothed it out and made it so nice. And, um, yeah, so, and then vinyl was very forgiving in that way, too. It, you know, it just, so, yeah, I, I definitely think vinyl is a more pleasing experience, without a doubt. You know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I did, some, I did a lot of recording in, uh, in, uh, Europe, especially in, out in Prague, and uh, what they do over there uh, is they record it. They record to tape first, and then they transfer it over to digital. So you know you get the best of both worlds. You and, get that warmth from the tape. Yes, exactly. And it, and the studios over there, you would not believe the amount of Neumann microphone microphones I've never never knew existed. You know they have thousands, I mean, hundreds of them in each studio, you know, because that's where all that stuff came from. And, you know, it's like just amazing. Yeah. Wow. Anyway. Wow. Yeah. You know, you asked about tin drum. Yeah. You know, <clears throat> I, I didn't. So my wife and I played and, <laughs> yeah. uh, and then she joined Ambrosia at some point and, uh, and we got very, so tin drum kind of took a, a, a back seat just for a while because we, because I was heavily working on, uh, Ambrosia and bringing it back, you know, because there was a there's like a kind of a slump with Ambrosia, you know, our heyday, and then we kind of slowly from the 90s and the 2000s started building it back up to where we're playing, you know, like 85 shows a year now. Yeah, uh, at least before COVID we were, yeah. and uh, and so, but now since COVID, uh, Tin Drum has become the Tin Drum family band because I've got my son. And I, my daughter is a great singer, guitar player, and so we've been doing the Ten Drum Family Band. We have, we got an album coming out soon, and uh, and we've done a bunch of streaming shows. So you got to check that out. It's wow. Good, absolutely. We will absolutely promote that here. Absolutely. Yeah. So that and that's one of the things we we ask all our <clears> guests <throat> is, uh, what have you been doing during the, this pandemic and, and keeping busy? Yeah. Uh, well. I mean, for me personally, musically anyway, uh, working with my family and recording my daughter and my son, my my, my wife, uh, we just had a new single come out uh, for Tin Drum. But uh, I started. Um, uh, I've always wanted to say, like, when I when and if I ever retired, I really wanted to get into piano. You know, study piano. Okay. I, I did it for a semester in college because I had to, and it was great. But uh, you know, I was too busy making a living. You know, after that, I mean, I, you know, and so yeah. I, I went back to studying piano during COVID. And, I'm, you know, that's all I want to do now. I don't even, you know, I, I may not be I may not be able to play with Ambrosia because I got to do my piano lessons. You know, it's like, yeah, <laughs> it's awesome, though. 
absolutely taking advantage of, of of this opportunity to do some of the things that you really oh it's been it's been great yeah yeah my, da great my daughter my daughter gives me guitar my daughter gives me guitar lessons my wife gives me piano lessons so that's great yeah. that is great so yeah. good yeah so you know we we have a couple of questions that we always ask all our guests, and one of them is you have you've you've seen the movie Spinal Tap, right? I live Spinal Tap. Yeah. Right? So, like, can, yeah. can you give us like one of those Spinal Tap moments that you guys oh, had in One absolutely. or two of them, you know, th these these are always so funny, and yeah. they usually don't get asked on interviews, so we always think this is a good one. Well, I mean, definitely more than once we have been. <laughs> We have been in, in, in an old theater, like especially on the East Coast, where they have those old friggin' theaters. Yeah. Old. And yeah. you're, da you're down in the bowels of this theater, and you hear your intro music go off, and you can't find the stage. You can't even find the – you can't figure out where the hell are we. And you're opening doors to closets and walking into – you know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, stairways that go nowhere. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I love that when you're you're in one of those buildings. Yeah. Like, okay, you got to go on, and who's gonna get us to the go on place? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you hear your intro music going on, and you just can't get there. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, yeah. That's well, we good. Had, we had uh, we used to have these scrims that we called them. You know, to, to yeah. um, cover to block the amps. You know, to put yep. them in front of the amps, which was. Kind of silly anyway, because people like to see the amps, you know. I mean, now we do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, now it's it's a point of interest. Like, what are they playing? And wow, well, you know, what are they doing? So, <clears throat> you know, we put these scrims, and of course, you know, like if something went wrong with an amp, the crew had to come out and you know and and, and move this scrim, and so you know, the scrims are flying across the stage, and it's just like the you know yeah. you try this stuff, and it's like half of it works, and half of it's like why do yeah. we ever? do that you know yeah <laughs> that's good that's yeah. good that's really good um we you know we always ask guys about about gear are you real particular about the the drums that you use and and like even the, the microphones and stuff are you, are you particular with that type of thing um i you know i have a my set that i like to use but a lot of times uh we're f doing fly dates you know so you, you can't <coughs> you can't realistically put all your equipment on the plane and it's provided for you when you get to the venue. Yeah. So we do a lot of backline and, you know, I have a rider that asks for certain things, but you know, I don't mind uh, playing different stuff. It actually uh, is kind of exciting for me because, um, you know, I, I'll typically get DW drums cause I endorse DW drums, but I, I'll play any good kit. And what's neat is, you know, like you get a different drum set and there's certain things in that drum set that are like really good. Like, like one night you'll have this incredible ride cymbal and this great sounding bass drum, you know? So you, you kind of hone in on those, the things that sound good, you know, and you know, like if your, your first Tom is to, you can't, it's just not happening. Well, you just don't play that tom that night. You play, you know, or or if you get a, all of a sudden a great snare and a you know beautiful set of hi hats, you know, you tend to work with what you got, and it's right. kind of neat because you, you'll you'll play different. You know, you'll it'll force you to think about it a little differently. Anyway, wow. yeah, definitely, yeah, definitely, it definitely it'll maybe take you a tiny bit out of your comfort zone and and keep you you know fresh, right, a little bit. Yeah, no, exactly, and ex and ex and I think it's good to be pushed out of your comfort zone because you know you'll it's too it's too easy. Like uh, first of all, I have to say that there is no comfort zone in Ambrosia because <laughs> good, good. <clears throat> it's it, it well, and it's you know we don't like to repeat ourselves, uh, especially you know on the more adventurous numbers. So, you know we like to, and you know I'd like to change up the feels a little bit. You know, I mean, there'll be some arguments about it, but that's okay. You know, it's like, uh, but we, if we come, if we don't like, we don't like to get into uh, set patterns to the point where we're, we're mindless, you know, and Ambrosius music's that's hard right. enough 
it's hard enough that you can't phone it in. I mean, you know, I mean, it's like, that, you know, you, it's a, it's a thinking man's groove. You know, you have to, you have, to, it has to groove, but you have to think about what you're doing. You know, so. So it's not robotic at all. No, no, no. Wow. In fact, it, if you do, if you do start to daydream, you're going to fuck it up. Excuse my language. <laughs> no, no, uh, that's we, that, that's our waiting, language. We're waiting for that. So we yeah. understand. You, you speak the, the language of our people. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. You're East Coast. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're New York. <laughs> Not only we are so East Coast, we're New York. <laughs> yeah. No, it's, it's really easy to mess up. You know, if you, so yeah, through the absolutely. years, you've um, played with just about everybody. Yeah. Is there any bands that stand out that you've toured with that either open for you or you open for them that, you know, kind of blew thought, my mind? Yeah. 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 Rory Gallagher blew my mind. Yeah. Rory blows everybody's mind. Yeah. Wow. I, I, wow. I, he, I thought he was just, man, the, he was the greatest. I, uh, and, the energy of him. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. One guy doing what he did. <laughs> and, and I, one, I mean, this, I mean, he played amazing and he's, you know, he sang amazing. But the one thing I remember, that he broke a string and he, he changed the string, you know, he, I mean, he changed the string and tuned it all while having a total conversation with the audience. <laughs> you would, you would never know. Wow. You would never know that he broke a string. He was so flaw seamless in his whole thing. That you know, it was like it was like uh, you know, you, you you see a guy run out, hand him a string, he da da da, he's straight, you know, he's tuning it up, da, da, all the time, all the time, you know, engaging with the audience, and then counted it off, and he's off, and it was like, wow, you know, <laughs> I mean, if I break a drum head, I'm going to start crying, but you know, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> well, I know he wasn't using a Floyd Rose, I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, but he but he was bending the neck. He yeah. was going behind the nut. He was, Rory was yeah. all in. When he was, you know, my my mentor, uh, Doug Varity, was a huge Rory Gallagher fan and brought me into that. And, and I saw him at my father's place here in, in Roslyn. Oh, yeah. Sure. It was just, you know, I was a kid. You know, I was, I was snuck behind, you know, behind somebody, you know what I mean? That sort of thing back in the day when we had to do that. And, you know, give me a... a bottle of bud and just sit in the corner and try not to have anybody see you yeah. but to see that show in, in that place you know and, and this you know rory was filling up you know huge theaters in europe you know you know yeah. he was working here and you know in, in doing the same thing in here but having to see him at my father's place which is you know tiny little place 200 yeah. people 210 yeah. people yeah, maybe yeah yeah <clears throat> yeah great great choice yeah, yeah. great but my, uh, you know, Ambrosia has done a lot of uh, gigs where uh, we've been other people's bands. Um, like we've, we've backed up Edgar Winter, uh, Dave Mason, um, uh, you name it. It's just, I mean, there's probably a list, you know. But my favorite, my favorite guy is Michael McDonald. Uh, we've done a lot of shows with Michael. Wow. Where, where Michael Mac McDonald's a, a, um, um Charity, not charity band, but when we when they have functions where he'll always call me and go, can you can you guys come play with me for you know this foundation for the, you know, and he's uh, we we actually rehearse at my he lives in Santa Barbara and I live in Thousand Oaks, okay. California. So he's yeah. about an hour he's an hour away, and he'll come here to rehearse because the whole band will come here, and uh, it's like you know nine in the morning he'll show up and he'll, like he'll have no voice and you know we'll pick a song to do it he goes oh i've never done that one i've never done that one you know and he'll he'll just open his mouth and he'll open his mouth and it's like what the fuck how can anybody sing like that you know yeah. and, right all of a sudden it's michael mcdonald yeah <laughs> it's, it's yeah. unbelievable and probably the the sweetest nicest person most humble person i've ever known and he really? can uh, he he just is amazing yeah Wow. <clears throat> yeah. So Very there's cool. a lot. Of, there's it's just nice to know there's guys out there like that. It's just, yeah. Yeah. It's an icon. Absolutely. We um. Yeah. You know, we one of the other standard questions is we always ask: Is there um, 
we call it the gear of the week, although it's not really that. It's it's a piece of gear or something that that um, that either you love or you hate. Recently, but you or you been, love you. Me. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, okay. My example is, is, you know, like one week I'll, I'll love a pedal, then the next week I'm cursing my Gibson Les Paul because of that G string that never stays in tune, you know. Wow. Um, but you've been around, you know, for many years and been recording and done anything. What do you see as a piece of gear that just like, wow, that's like the, been the game changer, you know, for maybe in recording or maybe it's on a drum, maybe it's a drum, a piece of drum equipment or what? What do you see as, as something that was really like the game changer for you? Uh, I don't, I don't know if I have any game changers, but I, I, I have a K Zildjian symbol that, you know, I, I, I just, it, you know, it, it sleeps between me and my wife in the bed, you know? Yeah. Wow, yeah. All right. So he does have that piece. He is that piece. Absolutely. And I got some black beauties that I love and, uh, you know, uh, I, I try not to, you know, get too hung up on the stuff, but, you know, there are sounds that, you know, that I want to hear when I play that are special to me. And so, you know, that, that one K Zildjian, that's the one, that's the ride I want to hear when I play. And yeah. so, yeah. But other than that, I'm not too hung up on it, you know? Um, yeah. I mean, we'll certainly listen to that ride. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's on. It's on all the records. Yeah, yeah now we, we're going in the, on that. There it is. Yeah, we we are going to be zoning in on that. We do that after the show every time. Is we always like, hey, do you remember when he said this? Yeah, I got to listen to that now. Let's go back and listen to it. Yeah, know, we'll do a group absolutely. Listen. So, Burley, is there like a a musical milestone for you with the band Ambrosia that stands out as like a song, a performance, uh, or something that? You know, you just said, that's it. That's, a, you know, a moment for me. Uh, well, I've had a lot of great moments, but I, I don't think uh, I don't think I've gotten to where I want to go yet. Uh, personally, I mean, the some of the, the best musical moments I've had have been playing little jazz gigs. And uh, I, I, I tend to I mean, I tend to gush about those moments, you know, Roland Kirk used to call them the bright moments, you know, you'd, you'd be playing and playing and then all of a sudden you have this, you know, 10, 15 seconds of just sheer, it couldn't be any better than that. And yeah. then you spend the next five minutes trying to get back to that 15 seconds of bliss, you know. Mm. So I, I've had many, many moments of, of that. I've, I've been fortunate enough to play with, you know, at least probably 60% of the musicians in Los Angeles. And, you know, there's just so many amazing, you know, players out here. I just did a, a film date where I do a lot of percussion dates, you know, cause I have a, a bunch of percussion and I got to, I got to play percussion along with Vanny Palaiuda. And, uh, that was, that was a huge moment to, uh, to be able just to play at that level you know, to be able to hang with him because he's such, I mean, to me, he's the evolution of drumming. You know, yeah, he's, right. he's the next chapter, you know. Wow. Amazing. So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, just being in the presence of some other players that I've totally respect has been the, those bright moments, you know, those great moments for me. Yeah. Wow. Wow. But I do, I, I don't feel like I have peaked or anything you know to me it's like i feel i always feel like i'm at the at the starting point you know right you know? Uh, uh so i've got i definitely feel like i have a long long way to go yeah. oh that's awesome that's great yeah <laughs> and, and <Good> <laughs> yeah and you know and now you're they're learning piano and guitar you know so that's uh you never know what's up next oh right? yeah yeah well, you know, it's, it's amazing how, you know, learning just a, a new progression opens up your writing like that. It's like, yeah, you know, yeah anything like that. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yeah. That's great. So we, we also, one of the, the standard questions we ask is uh, the one that got away. And, and this goes to gear, too. Obviously, you know, we're sure. big gear guys, too. So is there a piece of gear that was, uh, you know, either stolen, lost, you, you know, you traded away, you, you sold for a bag of cocaine. You know, is there something that uh, that you wish you would have you could get back? 
uh, yeah, there was a snare drum, like the first snare drum I had when I was, uh, well, the second snare drum I had, uh, I had a little uh, um, sonar kit. And yeah. this snare drum, uh, I, you know, after I traded it in uh, for another, for a, a lesser quality snare drum, but, it, you know, another great snare drum, but I just realized that snare, you know, years later I realized, oh my God, I had that snare drum and I let it go. You know, right. it's like, yeah, still hurts a little bit, but. Yeah, you know. yeah, yeah. I, I think we all, we all have that one or two that got away like that, yeah. Yeah, that you yeah. And, but, uh, and you can you can you can look them up on the internet and see them. And <laughs> what's going on with this? I'm like, well, I I can't. I can't yeah. believe that I'm that worth that now. What have I done? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, guitars especially. That's amazing, huh? These. Yeah. It's, are, are, it's stranger than that. Recently, uh, 412 cabinets prices have gone up, which is yeah. the strangest thing. Yeah, wow. nobody wants to lug those around anymore. Right, no one wants well, to lug them around. It used to be, you know, me, but... two two years ago, you could have gotten a four twelve Marshall cabinet for, you know, people are advertising two hundred bucks to get rid of them. Now, used ones are seven hundred bucks. Brand new ones are two grand. It's it's something wow. strange happened. That's amazing. Yeah. Wow. And I don't know. I, I like. Obviously, I have one sitting back there, and I, you know, it. Last time I brought it was obviously to Lenny's club, but yeah, it, it doesn't come out of here anymore. I don't, just... wanna, I don't want to move anything like that anymore. No. Too heavy. You got to get a hand truck, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the guy. Yeah. You know, <coughs> give, me, give, me, give me a modeling thing and a scrim in front and I'm good now. <laughs> hey. so. Oh, man. So, Burley, I know you get probably asked this question a lot, but for those people that may not know, how did you settle on the name? Ambrosia for the band. Okay, so yeah, uh, the band was originally named uh, before I joined. The band was named Ambergris Mike, and uh, you know, pretty safe name. It's it's that's what they make. Uh, that's the fluid in the whale that they make perfume from. Uh, <laughs> wow. Okay, you know, and uh, and so it turns out another band had the name Ambergris. So Joe looked in the in the dictionary and the next word after ambergris was ambrosia <laughs> that was easy <laughs> wow and that became the name you know it's the nectar of it, ambrosia is really the nectar of the greek gods yeah, nectar the of God. God. oh okay and not necessarily the dessert <laughs> no that came later but originally it was the nectar of the gods that kept them immortal and you know now if you look in the dictionary it's a mixture of fruit and nuts yeah so <laughs> But in, in England, we went there, we went, we did uh, our Rhode Island, that album we did in England, in London. And, uh, you know, we were being pubs and people go, oh, what's the name of your band? And they go, Ambrosia. And they go, oh, rice pudding. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, it's, that's the name of their rice pudding, Ambrosia. Oh, no <clears throat> but kidding. It's not as bad as Toto. You go to, you go to Japan, Toto is the brand of toilet seat over there. So... <laughs> Win <laughs> some, you lose some. <laughs> Didn't hurt no. their career, though. So no, yeah. no, yeah. they yeah. did very good. Okay. So, so you guys got like yacht rock. You guys got labeled that, and so. Well, okay. I you you might think that's a curse or something. Um, no. Well, I, well, actually, it's been fun. Yeah. You know, well, because. Uh, it's opened up a whole, whole new audience for us. Uh, well, it's it's recaptured an audience to us. Recaptured, sure. Yeah. Another so, generation. It, another two generate. Well, right. so, you know, typically uh, our shows, we'd have people our age, you know, coming to see us, and they may bring their, their kids because their kids grew up on it. But now, <clears throat> now it's like uh, you, we do these yacht rock shows, and what's cool is Ambrosia, you know, uh, actually has fun being the band you know so we'll be oh, the band okay you know, we'll be the band and we'll bring out uh peter beckett from player yeah who's okay. great, and john ford coley and oh uh, wow you know, yeah. all, so you know there's there's like 10 different artists and for us it's great because you know we've you know uh robbie neville i mean not Rob, robbie neville but also um 
who did uh, Steal Away. He's up from your area. Um, Rob, Robbie Dupree. Robbie uh, Dupree. Yes. Okay. So yes. all those kind of guys, they'll come and they'll do three or four songs and we'll be the, we'll be the band. And it, it's great fun for us. I mean, it's much more fun for us to do that <clears throat> than to go do four songs and be done, you know? Right. Right. You, know, you, know, you chopped up, you get, yeah. you get to hang out with your peers. Why exactly. not? And, you know, we didn't really hang out back in the day because we were all consumed with our own careers. And you'd be on a show with maybe so-and-so, but, you know, you'd have a few words with them. But now you're on a, you know, now you're driving from gig, gig to gig with them. And you really get to know them, like Stephen Bishop and people like that. Michael, Mike, you know. You yeah, know, like Stephen, sure. Pablo Cruz. Yeah. All the, yeah. All the, wow. it's, so it's a lot of fun. And That's great. And you see all these thirty-year-olds out there with uh, with their uh, captain's hats on, their little sailor. I got hat. my I got my Greek version on today. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, and what's funny though is they they, <clears throat> all, they know all the words, even though they're all shit faced. They all know. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, they all know the words. They're all singing along. You know, it's it's so. Uh, I mean, I. It's, I, I wouldn't want to, that to be our only diet, you know, I mean, because I, I, I want to play our other material, too. And in fact, sometimes, a few times lately, we've been called to play a, a prog fest, you know, and, right. that, we'll, and they'll ask us, you know, can you come play the prog fest, but don't play any of the hits. Just play, <laughs> just play the other stuff, you know, the okay. prog. <laughs> Ow. And that's that's. That's probably our most favorite thing to do because that that way we really feel like we're playing, getting to play out, you know. Yeah, right. But, uh, but hey, you know, uh, we don't we won't turn down a, a yacht rock gig, you know, because it's fun. It's just fun. Definitely love that. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I got to say, it's been it's been great uh, getting the chance to talk to you and, uh, you know, really get to pick your brain a little bit. And, uh, you know, anybody that, that's that's watching or will watch in the future, um, you may not know how many songs of Ambrosia you do know because uh, uh, you, you hear the songs everywhere and you don't you don't you may not even think about it, you know, as it's as it's playing. But uh you know, you guys get in, get you know in the soundtracks and the movies. It's everywhere, yeah. you know. And and that that yacht rock, you know, title is, uh, you know, it's not a bad thing. It's great. It's good to see that you know you can you can do a tour with with basically the rock yacht rock, and you see a bunch of bands that you really always wanted to see. It's, it's fun. really been great. Yeah. Yeah. It just keeps the music thriving. The yeah, it does. It, it it's been good for us, and it's uh, it's you know it has it's helped a lot. You know keep the name out there and people, you know, a whole new generation is hearing it and it's great. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Great. All right. Okay. So I guess we're going to, we're going to, we'll sign off and yeah, uh, we want you to stick around just for a couple minutes with us. Okay? Yeah. Thank, Thank you guys so much right. for your time and, and the yeah. great stories and, you know, you, you know, yeah. love you guys. Tremendous. Oh, Absolutely. Why don't you give us a, a quick, um, you know, let where us know can where... people, if they want to know more about Team Drum, they know about Ambrosia, you, you have like social platforms that you just want to promote real quick to get people to follow you and stuff. Yeah. I have parties at my house. <laughs> we'll be right there. Yeah. We're on the way. You're welcome. Yeah. So you have, uh, what's the Ambrosia website? Do you know? Off the top uh, of your head? Ambrosia live.net. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. And, and there's uh, Facebook pages and Twitter pages. For yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ambrosia Tendrum. You can go on in, uh, and, you got to catch, uh, I think our next 10 drum streaming is, uh, give me one set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 10 drum Absolutely. streaming is like Thursday, April 9th, April 1st. Okay, great. All right. <laughs> yes, yeah. All right, good. We'll put that, we'll put that in the, in put the description down good. below for, uh, okay. for somebody to remember and, uh, we'll sign off. Thank yeah, you. Everybody just for click quick, the like, click subscribe, to, follow to Donna Nolan for actually being instrumental in getting us to you. Oh, thanks. So awesome. I want to give her a shout out and say thank you very much from all of yeah. us. Yeah. So, You're sweetheart. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Great all person. Right. We're signing yeah. off. Okay. Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye.
Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, you so oh, man, much. That was, what a great, wow. Great, beautiful.